In this video, we will talk about integration by parts. It is a useful method of integration that results from the inverse of the formula for the differential coefficient of the product uv of two functions, u and v of x, namely this. So now we can invert this expression in a following manner. So as you can see, we have integrated both sides of this equation to give us that, which can then be rewritten in the following manner. In this form, so as you can see, this is the defining equation that we use when we perform integration by parts. Now, the integral on the right-hand side is often easier to evaluate than the one on the left-hand side. Now, some judgment must be used in the choice of u and v when employing this method. Now, this is particularly useful when one of the functions is an inverse trigonometrical function. So, in this case, this function should be taken as u. So that du dx, in this case, will be a fairly simple algebraical function. Let's demonstrate this with a bunch of examples. Let's look at this problem. Integration of x octangent x with respect to x. So like what we explained a few minutes earlier, let's take the u function in this case to be the inverse trigonometrical function, in this case octangent x, and dv dx in that equation to be x. So what that means is that your du dx will simply become 1 over 1 plus x squared. Now how do we get this? Now we know u is arc tangent x, so that means x is tangent u. So dx du is secant squared u. So that means du dx, which is 1 over dx du, is quite simply cosine squared u. Since x is tangent u, that means if you have a triangle, and this is the acute angle u, and this is the right angle triangle, x is here and this must be 1, so the hypotenuse is square root x squared plus 1. So what that means is cosine of u is 1 over square root 1 plus x squared. So du dx, which is cosine squared of u, must be the square of this function which is that. Next, to get v from dv dx is simple. It's just a matter of integration of x with respect to x, and that's going to be half x squared. So let's take this integral that we are trying to solve to be i, and we have taken this x to be dv dx and octangent x to be u, by employing the integration by parts equation that we wrote down initially, your i will become uv, so u is this, v is that, so half x squared, that's v, and u is arc tangent x, minus integration of v du dx. Now v is again half x squared, du dx is 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. So this is the integra integration by parts equation that we have used. So obviously this integral is easier to solve than that integral. See, that is the point of doing this. So let's try to solve this integral. That is just half integration of x squared over 1 plus x squared dx, which we can write quite simply as x squared plus 1 over 
x squared plus 1 dx minus half integral of dx over x squared plus 1. So the first integral is quite simply half x. The second integral is half arc tangent x. Now why the second integral gives you arc tangent x? A few minutes ago we showed that when you differentiate arc tangent x with respect to x, you get 1 over x squared plus 1. So when you integrate 1 over x squared plus 1, you should get arc tangent x. That's why. So having evaluated this integral, we can put everything together to get the following. Now, don't forget the minus sign. So you should have a minus sign here. And then simply rewrite this term. So the integral is just half x squared arctangent x minus all that, which can be rearranged and simplified in the following manner. Half x squared plus 1 arctangent x minus half x plus the integration constant c. So this is the final answer. Let's look at another example. So in here, which function would I take to be the u function and which one will I take to be dv dx? Now since you have x square root 1 minus x squared and x sine x, let's write down the two functions that we want to deal with. So this is the first function and the second function is that arc sine of x. So judgment says that it is easier to differentiate arc sine of x than to integrate arc sine of x. So we're going to choose u to be just that, arc sine of x. And dv dx will be the remaining function, which is x over 1 minus x squared. So that means du dx is 1 over square root 1 minus x squared. So how did we get to this conclusion? Well, since u is arc sine of x, then x must be sine of u. So dx du is cosine of u. That means du dx is 1 over cosine of u. Now, if you take here, if you represent this equation with a right angle triangle, so this is the angle u, then sine of u is x and that is 1. So this side must be 1 minus x squared. So from this triangle, cosine of u is square root 1 minus x squared over 1. So inverse of that cosine is quite simply 1 over 1 minus x squared. So that's how we get to that conclusion. Now what about the function v? Well, v can be obtained by integrating this function. And this can be easily integrated if we rewrite it in this following form. Why did we do that? We simply rewrite it so that the numerator is the result of the derivative of the argument of that square root in the denominator. Now substituting 1 minus x squared to be p, your dp is minus 2x dx. So substituting these results inside and that integral we will get which will give you just square root of p and since p is 1 minus x squared the function v simply becomes minus square root 1 minus x squared now we can rearrange all the terms inside the definition of integration by parts equation to obtain a solution for this integral i 
So using the definition of integration by parts and the results that we have accumulated, your integral i will simply become the first term is u times v, so u times v is arc sine of x times v, which is minus square root 1 minus x squared, and then minus the integral of v, which is minus square root 1 minus x squared, and du dx, du dx is that, which is 1 over square root 1 minus x squared dx. So these two terms will go away. The minus and minus will give you a plus. So this integral will simply become dx. So the final answer to this for this i is minus square root 1 minus x squared x sine of x plus x plus an integration constant. And that is the general result for this integration. Thank you for watching.